Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of FBBF Programming. In this part 6, we'll be exploring uh, a bit more on network security side. On the part 5, we explored XDP with EBBF and uh, developed a lightweight uh, firewall kind of application that works on incoming packets. And today, we will be uh, digging a bit deeper into the LSM hooks, how we can leverage LSM hooks with EBBF and put a restriction on outbound connections. Uh, using a beef uh, yes is going to be LSM aggress guard uh, aggress filter whatever you can say and we'll be leveraging this LSM hook and one more thing if you are hearing about LSM hooks first time in connection with ABVF I already created three videos regarding LSM hooks how we can use uh, LSM hooks uh, to put uh, different kinds of uh, restrictions uh, mo everything was based on processes the first one for it was for I think detecting malware using LSM hook and the second one was uh, pre uh, preventing Linux local privilege escalation and uh, third one before this uh, was uh, uh, I think a WAF kind of application uh, Windows uh, web application firewall kind of application that uh, that could be used as a lightweight uh, application to put restrictions on uh, web applications, command injections, and res reversals, blocking those kind of stuffs. And if you are if you are seeing this LSM hook first time, I, I prefer to go back and check those videos first. Then you will be you will get more clarity on that. And as you know, this. Uh, these all the LSM hooks are defined the, in this header file and if you go to this site I uh, can see that this is a header file that has all these uh, hooks defined and this is the <coughs> socket connection hook socket connect hook that we are going to make use of to put a restriction on our outbound, outbound connections and when you are going to use LSM hooks in your application uh, something you need to ensure is uh, your signature I mean uh, the LSM hook signature should match uh, with the uh, hook that you're going to use and the name uh, name of the hook like the path of this hook oh no this one the path here and this one should match and the signature should match and you should be using bpf underscore pro macro for this one and this name could be anything that uh, according to your uh, function functionality or usage you can define that name it's a custom name so we'll be leveraging these two so uh, structures mostly for putting restriction based on our need uh, i'll be showing a demo on how we can leverage port base restriction and IP base restriction and of course the return uh, if the return value is zero means uh, it's a successful uh, connection so the hook uh, doesn't break your the socket connection but if it's going to be a known zero value normally it's going to be a negative value that means we put a restriction on the connection so the process doesn't uh, allow it to be connected to the initiator uh, socket so basically this uh, LSM hook is getting called uh, on every uh, when uh, every time whenever a process tries to attempt to initiate a socket connection. So this is a perfect uh, area that we can put a restriction on outbound connection. So come back to the code. <coughs> I'm using the same logic that I used for the previous uh, XDP filter that was for incoming but this is it's exclusive for outbound but uh, the logic is same we will be supplying uh, the list of IPs from the user space application and from there uh, uh, after this EBVF is loaded uh, it takes uh, that value here it comes the, those values comes here and it checks whether this map uh, is having the restricted IP that we already supplied if so it blocks it otherwise it continues continuous execution and I, I <coughs> there's another area is a port I mean the port block that you if you want you can make use of uh, this is a way uh, 
and one more thing I can say is uh, this is a way to get access to the actual uh, source address and uh, the um, source port. Here you can see the source address uh, I used. I already explained these uh, these operators usage. Like if it's a pointer, you have to use this one. If it's going to be a normal struct member, you have to use the dot. And these things I don't exp I'm not explaining now because it's uh, it gets more complicated if you if I try to explain it here. The better you just try to learn yourself on these sites, basic uh, C programming concepts and other stuff. So here, the another important part you have to notice: we are converting this uh, SOC address, uh, this struct to SOC address underscore in, because this has the source port. Uh, I mean, not the source port actually, the port and the IP address that is uh, this socket is trying to connect to. We need the uh, both uh, for checking uh, our restriction. I'll show one by one. Uh, let me comment this part first and. Because I don't have how much IPs to show the demo, so I'm going to put the demo on both the same IP, but first on IP, second on port. <coughs> so first we uh, one more thing is uh, here I defend uh, this AFNet uh, explicitly here because uh, in VM Linux dot uh, this constant is not available, and if you ask me from where did I get this is something that different here you can come and check it here see i just copied it from here socket.h and if you want to check for ipv6 you can make use of a inet af inet6 uh, constant and if you are not if you don't want to use the vm linux header you can try to make use of uh, the bpf uh, header file a linux slash bpf header file that has all the constants defined, so you don't need to add it explicitly, like this. <coughs> so that's a code part, and first I will show here. I'm just, uh, as I said, I'm supplying this, uh, filling this hash map <coughs> RF from the user space, and I'm looking it here. And if uh, it found an IP, it blocks it. That's it. And blocks it means basically it returns a negative number. The, so that's a block actually here works as I explained in the PowerPoint here the return value negative means we we are blocking the connection <coughs> so let me just delete my current ABVF and make it again and removing my header file I mean skeleton header file <coughs> all these steps actually I explained on my previous videos like what exactly is happening here we uh, I'm making use of a skeleton header file from the ebvf app so I can load it manually in my user space application so I'm just making the skeleton and now I'm going to load and run it oh before uh, doing that uh, before creating my user space application loaded I'm just coming here okay this IP let me check my IP this <coughs> go is 158 in fact uh, 158 so now let my application loaded I uh, use this application loaded okay so before that I'm just ensuring uh, that I can access it from here. Uh, so first I try to ICMB and yes it works. <coughs> Second one I try is to connect to this using SSH and it should be connected. Yeah. So both ICMB and SSH are allowed to this IP now. I mean before the hook. Now I'm going to place the hook here. Mm. just see how it works now see the connection is terminated is not allowed because that IP is restricted now and if you do the same thing using SSH you'll get the same message this operation is not allowed because the IP I mean the connection to the IP is blocked using the APBF app now. 
so that's the ip filter now let us explore <coughs> how the board based filter works and not only uh, board based filter you can i think you can add uh, i haven't tested that one but uh, i have seen another option here uh, is based on the socket type uh, so socket type uh, equal to so maybe uh, i don't know the values ah yeah it's here dgram dgram for normally uh, udp and the, va the exact values if you want to filter you can i think it's here yeah this is for udp and so stream is for tcp <coughs> And you can check according to that. Uh, I haven't tested that one, so I'm not 100% uh, sure how it's going to work. Because whether it's going, we can filter it based on that here. It should be like because we can access it here, so definitely it should be. Uh, I'll try to do that later. Let you know that. So here I'm basically checking on the IPv4 that uh, the one that I showed now, and now I'm going to put a restriction on a port. Uh, will be explicitly uh, stopping communicating to this port from this machine any process that's trying to go to this port uh, regarding this port it's a kind of unusual port mm, not unusual on an attacker perspective you can see this port if uh, somebody is using this port he'll be a certified <laughs> certified attacker no I'm just kidding uh, it's normally <coughs> This kind of uh, this is one of the famous ports uh, Metasploit's reversal is using, and if you don't chain the port, uh, the time of attacking, this is not only I think uh, Metasploit almost uh, all the base uh, default uh, ports for attacking frameworks uh, they use it, make use of this port. So if they don't change it, we can uh, see this port communication. Normally, it's a suspicious communication. Might be uh, if you configure an application for explicitly using this port. Yeah, definitely, it's not going to be suspicious. So, so now in that case, you know this port is uh, legitimate. In this case, I'm going to uh, restrict uh, this based on the port communication. So the previous one was based on IP. Now we have to rebuild it for the port one. And before that, uh, I'm going to change my. Uh, where's my <coughs> user space application? Now, uh, this IP, I'm just giving some non existing IP because I don't want to put my uh, IP based filter there. It's just going to be a normal port based filter. So, what I can do here. I have to rebuild the app again. Let me check. I have changed it. Yeah, I saved it. So deleting my current one, just ensuring that is going to be a new one. And again, I'm just removing my old skeleton, creating a new skeleton file, and I'm running. <coughs> I'm loading my new uh, filter, uh, outbound filter that has both IP and port. So if it's going to be any of these IPs, so and I didn't bring the port number here, and it's going to be this port, definitely it's going to block it. Oh, before loading uh, the filter, I will show where it is going to be. We can where we can leverage this one. So suppose there is a scenario that somebody tries to um, I'm going to run my listener here and from here this machine uh, if I do this uh, basically the other machine the attacker will get a <coughs> reversal like the shell from that machine so it's just connected to my machine uh, see from here I got a shell and if you want to see this is another normal command that that is used and is uh, now i think that i guess i'm not using it who am I? because it's very easy to identify somebody is using who am I for the instant response team to 
get code. So yeah, this is one of the commands that normally uh, use. And now I have the reverse uh, shell connection here. So I'm just um, keeping it uh, here. Oh, just <coughs> so I'm so this is before the port um, restriction and now I'm going to did I make it already yeah okay I think I did make I think I'm going to put my port restriction now and now see what happens see see the this port is not allowed because we put a restriction here and we just explicitly checking whether this uh, this process initiating a connection to this port so if that in that case we just return a minus one so it means it's completely blocking it that's it about uh, the outbound restrictions based on port and ips uh, I think that, uh, that's what I planned for this video. Yeah, nothing more on this video. Uh, yeah. So I'll be coming up with another ABB of interesting uh, stuff, um, mainly focusing on uh, security part. I'm planning to move to container side uh, security stuff. Uh, but before that, I think there are some more networking things if I can cover. If I can learn it uh, before next week, definitely I will come up with that first, then we'll go to the container side. Uh, anyway, there are a lot of a lot of things. So you can do a lot of things with EBVF. So stay tuned if you are interested in EBVF. We'll see you soon with another uh, EBVF programming tutorial. Till then, say bye from Alphas.